This great shot that I wanted to move to, to do was to dolly down that long corridor and just open the doors in each office of Litvinov and Suslov and Mayara, etc., and end with Khrushchev and then dolly into his office after seeing all these fellows down the road. This was in the Kremlin uh, office uh, area, and which, which was verboten. If you tried to walk across the Kremlin uh, uh, promenade to that building, the whistles blew once. The second time, there were no whistles. They were just sh uh, shotguns. So nobody was allowed in that area. And we were allowed to come in there with our crew. And so well, that I was going to end up with Khrushchev and go in and do the interview with him. And then he told us that he wasn't, uh, he was not going to do the interview. And the way he explained it to me was, we had lots of conversations. He said, look, if you make a special point of my doing an interview, and this is my time in the Kremlin, that will date this film. But if you just make it general, all of us were here, but others come after us then that time, that film will be timeless and ageless. You'll be able to use it forever. So don't date it by having an interview with me, which was a very clever thing. Maybe somebody else gave him that idea. His son-in-law, for example, who was the chief editor of his vesture, uh, of the, the newspaper. But it made sense. However, I was very upset when they were, you see, we were allowed to come in at night. We couldn't come during the day because they were working during the day and there were a lot of secret operations going on. So at 6 o'clock, at 5 o'clock they would leave. From 5 to 6 it would be cleaned out, shredded, hidden, whatever. At 6 o'clock we were allowed to come in with, the, with our trucks and our generators and our crew and film inside that part of the Kremlin. It was Lenin's apartment, it was the offices of all these important people, it was the presidium where they sat and had their meetings, etc. And so suddenly we arrive at six o'clock and everybody's still there and working and, and the lights are on and they're, they're cursing us because we're laying our cables all over the floors and we're filming everywhere and tripping over them and they're tripping. Later I learned that they that Khrushchev said to them, let her finish, let her finish. But I didn't know what was going on because there was no radio or television that you turned on and got the local news or got the international news. There just wasn't such a thing in those days. The second, and this was, this was during the Halloween period. The second day I got a call from Foy Kohler, who was the American ambassador, who invited me to lunch. That morning, he said, can you come to lunch today? And I, you know, we always accepted a lunch date because the food was so terrible in those days. We lived on caviar, which was not so terrible, but everything else was inedible. And so I said, of course, I'd love to come to lunch. And I came down to the embassy at uh, one o'clock for lunch and was served a fabulous lunch, but there was only one other person in the room, which was very unusual. I thought he was having a luncheon party, which they did very often, visiting firemen and so on. There was one guy with a little rosette in his lapel, so we knew who he was, and the ambassador and me, and he said, well, tell me how things are going. And I said, oh, everything is fine, except I said, you know, well, they're supposed to go home at five o'clock and we come in at six o'clock. And now, that it's, for the last couple of days, they're not going home, and it's a pain in the neck because, I mean, you know, they stumble over my cables and, and Khrushchev won't do the interview that he promised to do, and I don't know what's going on there. And he said, well, Kennedy and Khrushchev are having an argument. I said, they're having an argument? He said, yes, but as long as they didn't throw you out, how much work do you have to do? I said, well, another three days we'll be finished. This is where at the end now. We've really reached the end. We've been filming since June. And everything is, is wrapping up in the government offices. And, and I, I was going to finish with Khrushchev's interview. He said, never mind. You don't. And I, I told him what Khrushchev said, and he said, never mind. He's right. You don't need to date this film. And just finish your work and pack up and go home. So I said, thank you very much for lunch. I walk out. On my way out, I passed the cable office. And I stopped into the office and I sent a cable to tell to, to Pierre Salinger. 
I said, I just heard from Foy Kohler that the president is having an argument with Khrushchev. Couldn't he wait until I'm finished in three days? He's lousing up my film. And I fire that off. Three days later, we have a big party, a going away, a hoopla, where everybody kissing everybody goodbye. We wrap up the film, we fly to Paris. I arrive in Paris and hear that I had been inside the Kremlin during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And the reason for their not going home at night is because they were deciding whether to start World War III or not. And I sent that cable to Pierre, and I thought, my God, what have I done? And I run to the phone, and I call Pierre, and I said, listen, you have to understand. I mean, there's no way that I knew what was going on. You don't have telephones, and you don't have uh, radios and television and, and, the, and the New York Times. I said, the Times guy wasn't even in town. He said, never mind. The president said, when I hear from you and you're out of there, to tell you to get your ass down here as quickly as possible, and he will discuss this whole thing with you when he sees you. So you can imagine how I felt. I sent everybody off to New York, and I get into a plane and I go to Washington, and I arrive in Washington, and I come to Pierre's office. He said, don't come in here. Just walk down the hall to Evelyn Lincoln, that's the president's secretary, and she'll tell you what to do. And I walk down the hall, and Evelyn Lincoln said, oh, the president heard you're in town, and he's expecting you just a moment. I'll tell him you're here. And she announces me, and I walk in talking as fast as I can. Mr. President, you don't understand. I mean, I had no way of knowing. I would never have said such a stupid. And on and on and on, and he said, I saw that cable, and I've been checking up. And I have to tell you, I told Khrushchev that if he gets the missiles out of Cuba, I promise him I'll take Lucy Jarvis out of the Kremlin. <laughs> and that, was, that was how we solved the Cuban Missile Crisis. He took the missiles out of Cuba and I left Moscow and the Kremlin intact. <laughs>